So with so many brands of nonstick cookware telling us what is not in their nonstick coating, what do we know about what is in their nonstick coating? Hi, I'm Jed, this is Cook Culture. So as many people that follow this channel know, I'm not a fan of nonstick cookware. I like to bash companies that try to overpromise and deliver on what they sell in their cookware, in their nonstick coating. But what does that technically mean? There are lots of little um, insignias or little stamps that you'll see on the packaging of nonstick cookware when it's hanging in the store that's saying what's not in there. Uh, always being trying to told what we don't have in our brand of nonstick cookware. But what is in nonstick cookware? Over the last many years, nonstick cookware has changed, it has evolved from known carcinogenic coating to unknown coatings. In this video, I'm going to discuss how we can make sense of what's being sold on the market now. Okay, so there's some technical words in what I'm going to be saying here. I've got some papers here because I need to read exactly what it is that the, these long acronyms are used for when you see something like PFOA, POFOS free that is stamped on the outside of a package with a big circle and line across of it. What are those and what do they mean? So the big one that most people have some sort of vague memory of is PFOS. And this is a PFOS is a perfluorooctane sulfuric acid. So this was a chemical that was used by Teflon, by used by DuPont. Uh, it was made back in the 30s or 40s. And it was used brilliantly for decades as a nonstick cookware coating, and it coated many other things like Scotch Guard and so on and so forth in the homes. And it was used and used and used and used. And what happened was that Teflon, DuPont, was found by, they were sued, and they were found that they were using a known carcinogenic chemical within their, their nonstick uh, finish. And so that's where very quickly, you know, you would have heard of, a, of some sort of a, of a law changed or a court happening, court case happening, and now all of a sudden the, the uh, nonstick surface was updated and everything's fine and you've got this band looking type uh, acronym on the packaging and now everything going forward is good and fine and everything's great, let's just keep moving and it was just a, a blip in time and now we're going to move forward. So what had happened technically is that DuPont was found to have been liable for using a known carcinogenic chemical in their cookware. They knew what they were doing. They had their own data, their own science that had proved to themselves for a long time that the chemicals that they were using in making anything to do with Teflon was carcinogenic to humans. And they continued to use it and they continued to produce it and they continued to dump it actually into farmers' fields. They were burying the stuff. Uh, and they just were not managing it whatsoever in any which way that they possibly could have. And you know, when you get right into this, it's, it's pretty horrible how the senior management and the CEOs of the company at the time behaved when they knew that this was happening and the actions they could have taken but didn't. Uh, it's, it's pretty astounding. And this is really what gets me when, when I get so particular about this issue and when I'm all like, I hate this and I hate that and why can we do this? When you actually see the human behavior of why this happened, because humans have done this to humans, it's really, really sickening. And that's why I get so particular about this of being so vocal, because we can't rely on anyone else except for ourselves to help make the choices that we need to to get away from using these chemicals. So uh, today I'm trying to uh, be less emotional about it and not be opinionated of it, just really try to lay out the facts in which we have known. And so going forward from that point, there was that court case, the chemical was known through the data that was supplied by DuPont within the discovery stage of the court case that they, were, they knew, had a known carcinogen that they were using. So they changed this very quickly and they produced a new chemical that they called Gen X, Generation X. So they had changed the structure of the chemical that they were using and they then quickly just started using the same thing. This entire time they became 
liable for this and paid out a large amount of money. They never admitted any guilt. They never admitted that they had done anything wrong, but they paid out near, oh, well, actually not nearly, but over three quarters of a billion dollars. And that's what it, they, they paid and they moved on. They changed their, the company structure, they changed the chemical, and they just moved on. They kept selling Teflon that, you know, same thing, but now not going to kill you slowly. And what's really amazing about this is that they did this basically voluntarily. They, they didn't have a government organization in any one jurisdiction that forced them to do anything. They made these choices and then they just marketed this material as better and there was no long-term stringent testing on this. The reason for it and the reason that there is so much gray around this entire area is the only reason that we know what they were using before was toxic was that they were taking samples and testing their own employees that worked in their factories and over decades they found that what they were using was toxic. You can't take a group of humans, break them into two different groups and one of them uses what you assume to be a toxic nonstick surface and one of them doesn't and let them go for 40, 50 years and see which one of them developed cancer. You, it, it, it's unethical to conduct a study like that. So studies are done on animals and what is known, which is really quite surprising, is that the chemicals that have been changed, so their new chemical that you will see marketed, that is PTFE, uh, that's the acronym for the long complex word, um, but that's what you'll see on all of the packaging that, that all nonstick brands use now, no matter what the brand is, it's all the same formulation. Uh, different companies make it, but same formulation. So they, they know that this has become an issue. So what they say here, that what has been proven in test animals, it's clear that all PFAS chemicals, PFAS is the group of chemicals that all of these other chemicals fall underneath, like PTFE, um, they have proven that PFAS chemicals are toxic to, to a certain degree. Epidemiological studies have revealed associations between exposure to specific PFAS and a variety of health effects, including altered immune and thyroid function, liver disease, lipid and insulin dysregulation, kidney disease, adverse reproductive and developmental outcomes, and cancer. This is a form of chemicals in the PFAS family and no different than what was proven with PFOS, P-F-O-S. So where the science is today is that the group of chemicals, no matter kind of where they are within this family, the, the PFAS family, uh, PTFE being one of those chemicals, they are toxic to a certain degree. And we can argue that, hey, you know, government should be doing something. If they're not, then this shouldn't be a problem. Cigarettes are toxic. They create cancer. We know that. People that smoke cigarettes knowingly smoke cigarettes, knowing that they could get cancer from those cigarettes. And they do that because they're being warned with it. And that's where we are right now with the labeling. So the labeling going forward. Labeling is going to be updated going forward here. And what's really fascinating is that the labeling that says that there are none of these type of chemicals, like no PFOS, PFOA, PFOS chemicals, those that say no, those actually are going to, by law in some jurisdictions, not be allowed to be on the packaging anymore because it's trying to tell you one thing that's not in there to give you some false sense of security that what you actually are using is somewhat better than what you aren't using. And that's where the rub is. The replacement chemicals have now been proven that are really not a lot better than the chemicals previously, but they aren't regulated, they can still legally be used, and licensing and regulation and packaging is being updated region by region, different places. I'm in Canada, Canada wide is having a federal issue. Down in the States, it's state by state. In the EU, it's an EU wide issue of how labeling and restrictions are being imposed on these things. But when you see the, the label on there that says that there isn't something, that is the biggest red flag. And when it's got the, the labeling on it and it's giving all these promises that everything is, is friendly and you've got a nice little green leaf and it's eco-friendly and it's got none of these bad things in it and then, okay, well, that's great because it's got none of these bad things in it. They 
don't have to put what is in it. And that's the thing that we need to understand here is that all, all, every nonstick brand when it comes to a, like a Teflon style base, I'm not talking about ceramic, but I'm talking about anything that is like a, a Teflon style nonstick. If it doesn't say ceramic, it's definitely the only other thing it's going to be is to be this like Teflon like or Teflon specific nonstick. It is all made from the same PTFE, PFAS type chemicals that are proven to be toxic. This is a known issue. I will put the science to the links to this in the show notes here. And that is just clear. That's unequivocal. The decision needs to be, what are we buying? Are we buying something that we knowingly is bad for us from the convenience of using something that is easy to clean and just releases my eggs really easily and we're just going to ingest chemicals? Or are we actually being duped? Like, are you being lied to on the packaging enough or misled that you're giving a false sense of security? And that is the part that concerns me. If you knowingly know that you're going to be using that pan and you're fine to make that balance of buying that pan and using it when there's chemicals in there, that's like buying a package of cigarettes with a cancer label on the packaging. You're going to smoke those cigarettes knowing that they can be bad for you? Fair enough. You, you know, we're all adults here. That's a decision that you've made. That's fine. But when the industry is misleading you on the marketing and showing you things that you want to see to give you that false sense of security, that to me is a massive issue, right? And that's what I just wanna make sure is super, super clear here that we understand that when it is a Teflon style nonstick, no matter what the brand is, what, however it's made to try to reinforce it with diamonds or titanium or some sort of a special you know, pattern to the surface or whatever the hogwash is that is trying to give you that false sense of security that is better than something else, it is untrue. It is all based on a chemical that is proven to be toxic to humans. That is what it is. So it doesn't matter the brand. If you could ask me this and that and the other thing in all the comments, the answer will be the same. If it is a nonstick based cookware, it is toxic. How toxic? That is questionable. Is it definitely toxic when it's made in bulk up front, when it's made in mass? And is there a waste component to it when it is produced? Absolutely. When that pan goes in the garbage and is incinerated and turned into vapor later on, the nonstick is released and it's turned into vapor, is that toxic to our environment? Absolutely. Like every stage of this process has some degree of toxicity to it. How toxic it is when you're using it and how that's gonna affect you as an individual, questionable. You'll never know, right? It could be completely benign, totally neutral, or it could be the one thing that pushes it over the edge for you. We don't know. But is it all toxic across the board and we use it unnecessarily? Absolutely. So unnecessarily is my point here at the end. You know, we know that any sort of label on there is a little bit of hogwash, but what do we do? Cast iron, carbon steel, stainless steel. Three types of cookware that are super functional, don't have to be a huge amount of money, easy to look after, and completely non-toxic. They are health promoting types of cookware. They're not healthy, no cookware is healthy. You're not actually cooking and eating the cookware, but they will cook in an absolutely neutral way that you can cook healthy, wonderful food and use one piece of cookware for your entire life. So if you have any questions about how to use those types of cookware, if you've had problems in the past, I've got a huge amount of information on this channel. I'm always happy to discuss that with you. Any other questions and comments, please throw them below. Thanks so much.